Namaste. Welcome to the fourth session of the course Yoga and Positive Psychology for Managing Career and Life. In this session, we are going to examine the yogic tradition through the lens of positive psychology. Before we harp on this journey, let us have a quick recap of what we discussed in the previous session. So, if you can recall, uh, we discussed about the three pillars of positive psychology and these pillars are about uh, positive subjective experiences, uh, individual characteristics and social institutions and communities. Positive psychology is examined and can be understood in the context of individual subjective experiences like well-being, satisfaction, optimism, hope, happiness. It can be understood as a positive individual characteristics like uh, virtues related to courage, wisdom, interpersonal skills, aesthetic sensibilities extra and there is a macro aspect of uh, positive psychology as well that is related to the social institutions and human behavior in the institutional climate and institutional context. So, we discuss about these things, we also looked at that positive psychology is now entering in the second wave as some people call it. The second wave of positive psychology is, uh, is distinct from the uh, earlier years of positive psychology which eventually were called the first wave uh, that is in terms of accepting and confronting with courage the reality that life is full of evil and suffering and life has evil and suffering along with that we have tendency for the optimal experiences. So, the, uh, the evil and suffering and optimal experiences our tendency to build uh, uh, competency, belongingness, determination, they coexist. Second, uh, sustainable well-being can be achieved through overcoming suffering and dark side of life. So, uh, though there is suffering, it can be overcome. It is something uh, very similar to what Buddha said that there is a suffering and there is a way of elevating the suffering. Uh, third, this wave, the second wave of positive psychology recognizes that everything in life comes in polarities and importance of achieving an adaptive balance is required. So, some emotions can be negative in certain sense in certain contexts, but they may not be negative, they may in fact desirable in certain sense in certain context in some situations. So, there is a recognition about that and there is a lot more openness to look at the indigenous psychology psychology traditions, spiritual traditions which have implication on the socio-psychological life of human, uh, human being that is acceptable and now the research studies are moving towards more assimilation of these traditions in the so called mainstream psychology literature. So, let us look at yoga through the lens of positive psychology. When we look at yoga and overall yogic tradition and here we do not mean yoga is only about asanas, pranayama and dhyan, we here mean yoga in the broadest sense as, as it is defined in the paper of uh, Dagar and Pandey. Uh, this yoga tradition encompasses emotional aspects, cognitive aspects, uh, aspects related to mind, aspects related to breath. It is also related to the world views, traditions involved and emerging from that world view. So, if we look at the yogic tradition in the broadest sense, we see that there is there are lot of ideas which are reflection of the positivity and human potential in the yogic tradition that is reflected in terms of holistic life goals. Uh, life goals are understood to be uh, holistic in nature that means it includes sensuous pleasure it also appreciates the uh, spiritual growth and evolution uh, it accepts the diverse pathways so holistic life goal and diverse pathways of achieving those goals 
that is first hallmark of uh, yogic tradition. Yogic tradition also elaborate in great detail about positive behavior and positive characteristics of human being. This has also a great elaboration on the positive experiences may be in the form of uh, uh, different emotions, in the form of different levels of ecstasy described in the Taittiriya Upanishad in the Anandavalli or Brahmanandavalli Sutra. It is also in the form of different type of samadhis explained in the Yoga Sutra. So, there is a great deal of reflection and elaboration on the positive experiences. Yogic tradition uh, are also replete with positive events. If we look at even if you even if you look at today's calendar, the Hindu calendar of uh, uh, Vikram Samvat, you will see some tithi, and tithi will have some particular name that must be reflecting what should be done, how should be celebrated that particular day, and that celebration is related to the uh, weather conditions, lifestyle, and the stage of life. So there are great elaboration, there is uh, uh, immense opportunities for positive events. Yogic tradition also talk about positive institutions, uh, family, educational institutions, government, these are some of the positive institutions. The potentiality and positivity of those institutions are also explained in great depth in the yogic tradition. Then we also talk about positive society. Positive society is the outcome or reflection of pursuing all these positive aspects of life. Though there is a great deal of recognition that human beings have negativity, evil, problems, disorders, but there are many pathways, processes and uh, interventions to, uh, to grow, to outgrow from those evil and inculcate all these positive aspects of life. 